This afternoon is one of our red digital pencil case series. So these are tool based sessions designed to um, introduce people to WordPress blogs. We're also uh, lucky this afternoon to be joined um, by Marie Grant. She is here from uh, Bridalbin Academy um, and she is a class teacher there. Um, she's going to talk to you as well about how she uses class blogs. Um, I was really lucky to hear her speak at SLF this year um, and was really inspired by how she used it. I used blogs with my class before I moved to Education Scotland. My name is Jenny Mackay um, and I'm one of the digital skills officers in Tayside but I also work in the National DigiLearn Scott team um, but um, Marie is using it with her class and so I thought it'd be fabulous to hear from her um, and hopefully you will be insp as inspired as I was um, by what they've been doing. So this afternoon we're going to look at um, accessing glow blogs, how you access them, um, where you can incorporate images, how you might want to use them and that's what Marie's going to talk to you a little bit about and I'm going to show you how to build a blog from scratch quickly and easily, how you can set your sharing up um, to use it privately within Glow, um, to set posts up in draft forum and how you can share the learning experiences that are going on in your classroom. It's such a versatile tool um, and it can do so much and looks really professional. Um, so hopefully you'll get that from this afternoon. And I would always say as we're going through, if you have an opportunity to have another device, you could be doing this along with us. Alternatively, always try and make your own one. You can't break anything really in Glow, so never be afraid of it. Um, always have a go, build yourself one, and I'll also show you how to delete one. So if you make a demo one for yourself, I'll show you how to get rid of it too. Um, also this afternoon we're going to show you kind of what the key features of blogs are, the different tools that like I said it can be used for and then at the end I'm going to show you where you can access further professional learning and materials. So if there's anything that I've not covered there or on this slide here, which will go into more depth of what we're looking at, if you were hoping to see something really specific, please do let us know and we'll try and incorporate it. So I'm going to give you a demonstration of how they can be used and that's going to be uh, Marie. Um, I'm going to then talk to you about core information and Glow blogs, um, how you add your own tile, create your blog, use the dashboard. So it's just like in a car. The dashboard lets you see how to do all the stuff behind the scenes in the car um, other than it just looking sleek to users as you're using it. How you create different posts, add media um, and edit users. When you're adding Glow on uh, blogs onto your account, you'll see lots of tiles. So you have to add the tile that's suitable for your local authority. So when you're finding it in the app store on Glow blogs, you're just looking for your local authority. Once you've added it, it's a really simple two step process to get started. As I mentioned, Glow blogs can be public or private, and that can be for just you and other editors who are going to um, build the site before you make it public, or it could be something that you and your class are doing, and it can be something um, as part of your perhaps literacy work. Um, it's also a really good way for learners. Um, there's a, a portion of Glow blogs that allows them to create a sort of e-portfolio um, so they can create a sort of year journal of what they've been doing whilst in your class and you can use different features in blogs to sort of tag it to different areas of the curriculum and all of those are built in for you um, so there's lots of ways it can be used. There are different ways in which it can look and these are called themes. And as you can see here, they all look a little bit different. Some are really visual. So if you're here from a secondary, for example, and you're um, quite a visual subject, for example, art and design, you might want to use something like 2017, which is a lot more graphic. Or if you're from a subject, um, maybe the, or you're the librarian, we know that lots of librarians use these and they're really great, the sites that they build. You might want to have one that's slightly more traditional with lots of menus and options for people to jump off. But you can really personalise it to what you want. 
Few core things, people are always uh, aware that you can add video, audio and images, but they're less aware that you can also upload documents. And this can be really handy if you're using it to share maybe a learning experience that's happened in the class and you want to share the transcript or maybe the lyrics to a poem, a song or the words to a poem um, that you're doing maybe with Burns Night coming up. Um, couple of one core thing that you should know is it's limited to quite a small media file but you can compress it and I'm going to show you where to shrink everything down should you need to you can also ask for more storage um, but it's limited to three gig which doesn't sound that much but it's generally quite small thumbnails so they don't actually take up very much room okay so when you're using blogs Everybody who uses it has a different role. So you as the creator, as the administrator, you might also have a, a co-administrator. We would never recommend one person is in charge unless it's your kind of one to test out and play about on. You should always have multiple people who administrate it or are editors. Um, that just means if you're off sick or anything, somebody else can access it. If you're doing it with class or colleagues, stage partners or department colleagues, you would have co-authors perhaps, and you might ask learners to be contributors. Just to let you know that these are all um, in a PDF available to you after the session. And again, I'll show you where else you can find all this information online too. Anybody viewing it is a subscriber and the subscribers in Glow can also manage their profile so they could remove themselves or you can remove them if a young person moves to a different school, for example. So um, the subscribers are a nice way in Glow to keep it private as well. So with that, I'm going to hand over, just so you can see one of these blogs in action or a couple. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Marie um, and uh, if anybody has any questions, just pop them in the chat and we'll get Marie to answer. Thank you, Jenny, for the um, introduction, which I don't know if I'm deserving of, but we'll wait and see. Um, so I am Marie Grant, I work at Fredalban Academy and I've worked here for four years and um, before that I worked at Lockery High School for 14. So I've been on the go a wee while and although it doesn't sound like it, I haven't just arrived in Scotland. Um, so Glow Blogs, um, so I changed the way I taught poetry over the last couple of years after um, doing some reading and someone suggested to me why don't you make a blog with all those poems that the kids are doing and I thought okay that sounds fine how hard can it be so it wasn't that hard um, I was pleased to find out but it can be overwhelming when you first start but luckily there are lots of people to help so I'm just going to go through and show you how I started and if you've got any questions please put them in the chat because um, I find that's more interactive if we do that doing this so this is our primary seven poetry blog um, and this is what it looks like and this is the welcome page it just says a little bit about it some of the poets um, that we have used poems from and some of the resources um, that we use so this this here is quite handy because I've hyperlinked um, all of these poets to different pages um, and you can go straight there by clicking on them so, um, as Jenny said, you, when you go to this, your launch pad on Glow and you go to Scotland, if you type in Glow Blogs, the only one that will come up is your one. So that's my Perth and Kinross one there. Um, and then once you click on that and you've added it to your launch pad, you get this page, which is basically create a blog. And you just click on that and um, you basically read the information. And then you can just start creating it. And it, it, it seems overwhelming with all the stuff that everyone talk about today but actually it's not that difficult because the themes are like packages for a web page it's already set up you don't have to do um, sort of html or anything like that the packages are already set up what you do have to do though is decide how you want it to look do you want a picture on the background do you want your school logo on and that type of thing what do you want your menu to look like um, i got lots of help from a man called um, John Johnson. He's available if you go on to Glow Blogs and click Help, um, which I did quite a lot when I first started. Um, I got stuck with things, so I clicked on this Help button, and I would ask him things like, how do I get the kids to add poems themselves, and how do I change the menu to look like this? And that was, that was really, really helpful to me. Um, 
So basically, the kids in my class um, are all editors. And the reason they're all editors is because that means they have control over what they publish. So it's not just we do a poem. They write them in their jotters and type them up, send them to me, and then I upload them. They choose whether they want to publish their poem. So this poem here, um, it's called I Come From. And the home page is this one here. And this poem came from one by Robert Caesar and Dean Asser called I Come From. Um, and so I put a little bit of information there. So when they write their poems, I say, if you want to put it on the blog, you can. If you don't, just type it up. So we've got a good copy for your Joshua. And then they choose. And for me, that's pivotal to why this is successful, because they're choosing to publish or not. Um, last year's class was um, a really busy class. This year's class is a little bit different, but more a publishing, um, which is really interesting. Um, so this is a poem um, by a boy in my class um, and he's particularly good at writing but um, he chose to publish his poem and it's got lots of information in it that he would probably be quite nervous to read aloud but he was happy to type it up and publish it um, so I'm just going to read it to you I hope that's all right I come from cats and dogs I come from a small house in Abbeville I come from the warm heating in Italy at my mum's sister's house. I come from the cold water in Perth swimming pool. I come from the empty football pitches with silence. I come from the cold, rainy air in Scotland. I come from the hospital in Perth. I come from professional wrestling. I come from the sandy floor in Banff. I come from a tiptoe-walking family. I come from my dad with eye-staring problems. I come from having blood dripping down my nose for ages. I come from thinking I would pass out to running about in the garden while the grass flows past me. I come from hating movies to becoming a Marvel movie nerd. I come from love and all that, and that's all that matters. Um, and what I see when I read that is someone who's a little bit worried about sharing out loud in the class with others watching, but quite happy to publish. Um, and I think that's quite powerful because he can access that from wherever he is and he can show, you know, his parents and his mum and dad um, and he can share that with other people in the class and have them read and comment. Um, we share the blog with parents, but we don't have many followers. It's just really for our class, although it is available publicly for people to look at. Um, so there's lots and lots of different things you can do to change the look of your blog and I know Jenny's going to tell you some more about that. Um, this is the one, this is the blog that we did last year, which is a little bit different. It's a different theme, and all the photos and the pictures on there have been chosen or photographed by the kids. Um, they can choose to put an image with a poem when they put it on. We've, we've talked about how to do that. And also they can comment on each other's poems, um, which is quite a good thing to do when they're finished typing them up. So this girl here wrote a poem called An Old Book. Um, and in that one, she's comparing herself to an inanimate object. And some of her friends um, have commented on it. This comment here um, from this girl, Emma Allardyce, she's actually a sixth year pupil. We did a workshop with some older pupils, and she wrote a poem with the same theme, and she's commented there. So that, that made the, the author of that poem feel really, really happy and really pleased. Um, the, the thing I like most about Glow Blogs is that I don't have to do all the work because they're all editors. So last week we were, um, I was isolating because my son was COVID positive and I had to isolate with him. Um, but I managed to still do a poetry lesson with the class virtually because I was well and working from home. But because they're all editors, they could all get on with typing up their poems and all I had to do really was keep an eye on who was doing what and they would come up and say, I've finished doing my poem, Mrs Grant, and I would have a look at it and say, remember we talked about the last line, maybe you want to have a think about turning that round a bit and then they would go off and do that. But because they're choosing to publish, I'm not having to then upload everything for them, um, which is what I like about how it works. So if it's okay for time, Jenny, I'm going to read one more poem because that's what I like to do the most. Yeah, of course. 
Um, this one is called um, My Opinion, and it's a really great one to do because it's nice and easy. It's just couplets of love and hate, so it's a great one to do with the class. And this is called My Opinion. So what I love about bacon is its meat. What I hate about my friends is their limbs. What I love about dogs is they are playful. What I hate about flies is their buzz. What I love about summer is the heat. What I hate about winter is the cold. What I love about fun is the joy. What I hate about happiness is the end. What I love about music is the beat. What I hate about the songs is the singers. What I love about hugs is the warmth. What I hate about love is betrayal. What I love about butterflies is their wings. What I hate about responsibility is the guilt. That's quite a punchy one. Um, so pretty much um, that is my rundown and my experience of using Globe Logs. But once you get your head around how all the technical stuff works and ask for help if you need it, um, it's quite straightforward. And it was really easy for me to do the second year because I knew what I was doing. Um, and it makes a great platform for any class project, if you were doing a topic, if you wanted to engage with parents at home or maybe partners in the community, it's a great thing to do. We've also got one for a social enterprise project we started last year, so people who have given us um, resources and money can go and have a look and see what we're up to. Um, Thank you so much, really. If, if people have questions later, I'm happy to help. Um, you can email me. I'll put the, my email in the chat. If you want to start your own blog or you're halfway through starting one and you're stuck, I'm happy to answer questions because I've, I've gone through the same experience, like thinking, oh, how do I do that? And then sort of wait for someone to answer and help. So, But, yeah, I would encourage people to email John Johnson and use that help button on the Globe Logs if you're stuck with something. Thank you so much for presenting. Um we've got a comment for you um, really interesting way to use uh, blogs especially for upper stages thanks so that's really lovely thank you for that okay so taking um what's been shown and how it's been used at um Brid Album academy i thought i would now take you through how to create your own as you do have to add a tile and we know that most of you will be aware of that but just if you haven't already got the Globe blogs tile open up the add button select blogs so you'll be greeted by um, a large set of screens you would just basically find the right tile for your local authority um, so um, you saw there that uh, marie had a uh, perth and king ross i'm central because i'm scottish government so i'm going to add central once you have that up close your pop-up window and return to your launch pad this is how you can access all of your blogs that you have if you have any in particular that you're using on a regular basis you may want to take the url link and create a little tile to it there for example the digi scott learn scott when i'm in and out of all the time so i have a shortcut and that's just pasted the link into that blog click it and you're given the page that you saw there so my sites lets you see any existing um, blog blogs you might be a part of and create a blog. So starting afresh, you're going to create a blog and it does this handy thing. It gets less handy the more blogs that you're part of. Um, but in here, it'll show you blogs that you're already a member of or an owner of. So up here, I can see all the ones and that way if it's letting you see and it, you, it says you can't use that name. You can check if you've already used it before. One thing I should say is once you've named it in terms of the URL, that can't be changed. Um, and also if it's been used once, even if you delete the site, it's been used. So um, if you're making a dummy one, um, we would normally, like when I used to work in my old local authority, I would normally put in something and then just like a super random long number. So like literally anything you want, like nobody is ever going to name it. You'll see it all the time in this list and in the other place I'm going to show you. But it just means that's not really a realistic URL that you're going to use. If learners are using it, you might want to give it like a class name. Um, so I'm just going to make it something really long and random. So that I know I'm not likely to use that again. One, two, three, four, 
there we go. And then the site title um, is what will appear at the site and that acts as like a sort of homepage name. So I'm just going to call this Jen Class Monday. You can set your language. So again, if you have English as a second language users in your class, they could set it to their primary language if it's one of these options. There isn't an option to make it English UK and just be aware of that. And you also have this handy tool. So you can, if your plan is like, one of my class old blogs when I taught P1 was we had a blog that we shared regularly and we wanted it searchable so we made it Googleable essentially. Um, but you can choose to turn that off if you kind of want to share the link, make it public, but you're not really wanting people searching on the internet and finding it. So you have that choice there. The e-portfolio bit I was talking about at the start where people might use it as a sort of journal of their learning throughout the year. This is the section that you would choose to turn that on and off. Some local authorities as a matter of course use the e-portfolios for sort of P6, 7 upwards. Others don't, um, but you may want to investigate it yourself. We're going to just stick with blogs just now and we're going to create it. So I gave it a name, that's the URL. I gave it a title, which is this Gen Monday class. And I chose a blog that isn't searchable. And I just hit create and it's done. You'll see here, it gives me a shortcut link that takes me straight to that page. But always when I go to that, um, the tile here, or I can see this My Sites button, I can I can see all of the different um, blogs that I'm a member of. So if I just click this here, just to let you see the slightly different view, go to my sites, it lets you see all of the different blogs that you own or member of. So this account that I'm using today has access to these. If you're using one regularly, you can follow it just to make it slightly more prominent. And that means that you can access it through this shortcut here as well. So it's quite a handy thing once you're used to it. So to visit it, once you've built it, a blog simply looks like this. It's not very exciting. Here's the name of our class, uh, the blog that we've created. We've got options down the side and we can now personalize it. So there's two ways to personalize it. First one is this customize button. Alternatively, click this bit wherever you see your name it takes you back and forward. So home will let you see the blog as it's seen publicly. And when you're seeing on that, that changes to a little speedometer because it takes you to the dashboard, the back of the web. So we're on our blog and we're going to customize our site. So the first thing we're going to do is give it a banner, make it kind of eye catching. This is also where you choose your theme. So select change. And then you can see all of the different themes that are available to you in Glow Blogs. If you Google Glow Blog, uh, if you Google WordPress Blogs, which is the facility in Glow, you might see some additional themes, but it's best to stick to just look through the ones that are there. You can't add additional ones in at present. Once you want to have a look, you can choose to have a live preview. It lets you see what it might look like. So it lets you see kind of what that looks like. If you don't like it, you can change it. And we'll just, we're just going to go back to 2014. We're just going to stick with this one. And that I think if I'm right, is the one that um, Marie just showed you as well. The only thing I need to say to you about uh, the themes is once you've picked them, you, I wouldn't ever advise that you change them. So it's basically the only time I've ever managed to sort of mess things up. It didn't break it, but um, I lost some of the graphics and things that went with a blog that I was trying to change the theme of. So once you have um, a theme, you kind of have to run with it. Uh, so think carefully before you pick. <laughs> so in here, you can give it your name, you can rename it, um, whatever you want. You can also give it a tagline. So your class could come up with a motto, you could use your school motto, etc. Or you can just remove that if you don't want it. You'll see it appears up here. So, so it's just like a wee tagline that appears. You can choose to have it or not have it by ticking that box. 
this button's important because it acts like a home button, a bit like if you're on the Tesco or Amazon website and you click Amazon, it takes you back to the home page. Um, so that's a handy button just to always, I would probably recommend you keep it. And then you can select an icon. So the way that you do that is you can see that you can choose if you have already got items uploaded, you can see them here, but we don't because this is new. So we're going to upload and select a file. So we're just going to click an image really quickly. Um, so let's make it this little DigiLearn. So I've selected an image. So I went to upload, selected something off my device um, and I've uploaded it. Once you're happy with it, you can give it an alternative text for accessibility screen readers. And that means if somebody's using screen readers, it'll read to them um, what that is. So it says to them, did you learn logo? And then select. You then have to crop it to fit because what we're going to do is make one of these little tiles. So um, we're making a sort of little icon for the top. So I'm going to shrink this down and we'll just make it Digi Education Scotland crop. So now it's not very clear, but if you see up there, that's changed from white to um, blue. If you were using an iPhone um, or an Android phone and you created a tile on your phone, so you saved that as a tile, that would be the wee app logo. So it's quite cool. It also starts to introduce young people to what the proper terms for these uh, site icons are rather than just the wee photo at the top. Okay, at any time though, you can um, change the image. Um, so a young person or you can go back in and change it so you could have a competition for what the logo is going to be, etc. Once you're happy, you would just hit publish. And that makes all of those things live. It's not published to the internet. You're still the only person that has access to them, but it's basically like the save button. You then go through and you can choose different options. So you can choose the text color. So that's changing this bit up here. So we'll make it stand out by being nice and red um, or in fact really blue. And you can also choose the background color. So you can't see it here, but there's going to be a big window down here of different color. Again, if I try and go uh, back without saving, it will let me. So you do have to publish it for it to take effect. You can then choose an image. So add a new image. So I could choose one I've already used. You'll see there's the cropped one, the original one, or I could upload a new one, upload file, select. And I'm going to choose this white logo. It will show you it being there. If you want to change the image you're using, just click it until you've got that blue box around it with a tick. Once you're happy and select. So we're going to just crop that as full size. And we're going to leave it up there. So it's not the best image, but there's one that I prepared earlier, but it lets you see. The images that you need for your banner always need to be panoramic or to take like a panoramic horizontal slice out of a normal sized image. Um, so it's always got to be that. You can't really adjust it to be um, this unless you make that a full sized header. Um, so you always want that to be kind of shrunk down. Again, once you're happy, simply publish. Lastly, you can choose to have a background image. So if we just choose something that's slightly more interesting, let's just for the sake of this, let's just do this icon because it's per uh, green. We'll upload an image and we'll insert. A couple of other things I want to show you. Is, so instead of publishing, I can choose to save it as a draft. So if I'm not sure and I want to get somebody else's opinion, this is probably more apply if your web, if your blog page is public, you might want to just save that as an idea of what you want to do rather than actually change it until you've shown somebody. And so you can do that or you could schedule it to take effect later on. So you might want to do it the night before, but show it to your class before you publish it. So you can schedule it, but we're just going to publish it for just now. You can also choose 
based on the image that you've used to kind of focus it if you want it in the center and um, if you want it all over also if you want to stretch something and um, fill your screen a bit like um, a desktop image you can also see what it looks like in different locations so down at the bottom of your screen you can see web and phone etc once you're happy publish it if we get rid of this and we go to our blog. Now we can see the colour I selected, which is a bit of the poster as well. My banner along the top. I've got my icon here, which if I click refreshes my page. And I've got some menu bars and we're going to just look at them in a second. So here is one that is slightly less jarring on the eye, I think, maybe, than the one I just made. So, I've got my banner along the top, I've got my name of my title, here you'll notice that I've added a wee menu at the side and I've got my menu down here as well. I haven't added any blog posts and that's what we're going to look at next. So all I did was everything there has been through the customise your site button. You can do that at any time by just going to your dashboard and customise. Super simple. But what we're now going to do is if we go into customize again and we're going to choose menus so here you can see we've got a demo menu it's called and then we can choose the location so we've got a top menu and we've also and that's this one up here and we've also got a secondary menu and that's this one down the side so i can choose one that i've already created or I can add a new one. So I'm going to create a new menu. I'm going to call it Monday menu. And I can choose where I want it to go. So if I call it the top menu, go next, you'll see it uploads there, but I haven't really got anything in it. So that disappeared, that page that was there has disappeared. It's still in my blog, but it's hidden and I'm going to add items to it. So I can choose what I want to have up there. So I can choose an existing page that I had. Um, I might have already put a post in, so I want to flag that up. Or I can choose to add a new page. I can choose to add um, information or anything I want. So I'm going to choose to have um, a page called like add. We'll just do it about our so this could be some information around your class so i've created a page that when i click here i could write some information about our school i can also change that and remove it i can add an item from that i've already used so for example i'm going to put um an if I wanted to, I might add a new page into there and we'll look at that later. So I could use that as sort of like a drop down menu, but these menus can be personalized. You can add different buttons. You can add lots of different options there. So again, you saw um, uh, Marie had lots of links along the top. So that would just be adding different pages, different web links, etc., along the top. So this can be personalized to be if it's a department, if it's a school, different stages, subjects, or it could just simply be one link about the school and you're going to use this menu here. You can also choose, if we go down to here, to add a secondary menu. So we're going to do that and we're going to go out of Monday menu we're going to choose demo menu and you can reuse a menu that you've had before so here I've pasted in a URL so I add new and it was a URL I've added and I've also added in so if I do edit so here I've just added different options Oops custom link and it's a different url so it could be for example just even google if i wanted my class to use google so you would just type it in tell the text what you want it to say and then add to menu those will work automatically and create new web pages but you can add in things like search buttons etc really easily 
Once you've got some core things, I would normally suggest that you publish it and then come out of that menu. So we're just going to close that down, go back. So there is, and um, if you've ever used GoBlog before, you'll notice that you kind of have to flip flop back and forward a little bit just to check what it looks like. If you have two screens, that does make life easier, but that's not always available to everybody. Um, I am. Amanda, no problem at all um, for joining. Thanks for coming along. Um, this is our introductory session, so I hope it's of use. But um, you might want to add something really useful into your menu, like a translator. So the school I used to work in was really diverse. So what you can do is you can add different widgets or plugins. Um, and plugins are just scripts that make the computer do different things. So one plugin is a translator. So here, you would, you're going to scroll down this menu and you're going to use plugins and you can choose a whole range of different options that are available to you here. So there's a few by default I would always recommend that you add in just regardless. So one is this 14 colours. Um, it improves just the, the colour scheme of your WordPress blog. Um, it does lots of different things in the background. Like I say, these are kind of running a computer script for you. You're just basically activating them. So to select one, so I deactivate that just now, all you do is click the box or click activate. And you'll see it turns blue to let you know that it's active. So the ones that I would probably recommend as a default that you turn on are this Draw Attention Pro, the 14 Colours, um, Jetpack, and Jetpack simply um, just makes everything run more smoothly. Like that is, this, there's a very simplified version of what it does, but it just works better if you have Jetpack turned on. So just activate it um, and then just does its thing in the background. And then you'll see um, I'm going to um, include the Google Translate. So once you're happy with that, you can edit the appearance of your um, menu. So we're going to go to Appearance and we're going to go, go into Widgets. Here's all the different things that were in my menu. So you saw there I had a search, had recent posts, comments. And again, if you don't want to have comments turned on until you feel comfortable, you might want to introduce these to your class gently or um, have a soft rollout where you're simply using it to share and then you want to um, introduce comments or um, in fact if you're sharing it publicly um, I know quite a few schools choose not to turn comments on but have a general statement on the home page that says if you'd like to chat about anything to celebrate it or to discuss it further come and have a chat at the end of the day or make an appointment kind of thing so you can choose to turn something on or turn it off just delete it if you don't want it but because we've turned that Google Translate on um, I'm going to scroll down here and I never find things and I'm looking for them. Here we go. Google Language Translate and I'm just going to drag it and drop it. So I want it to be quite prominent on my website, um, on my blog. So I've added, I just basically went to Appearance because I turned it on in the plugins. Go to Widgets, Add Translate. You can move it around if you want. And when you're happy, just go back to your page and have a look. And here now we can see that we've edited our menu instantly and there's Google Translate. And this works brilliantly. So one way you may choose to use it, depending on the age and stage of your class, you might want to pop in information for learning activities for an individual. It depends on the access that you have to different resources and everybody's setting and local authority is different. But you can, if you want to have just a static page that can be easily shared without um, a young person having to log in to go, you could give them the URL and they can see different pages and share that with their family um, in their um, first language perhaps. But here we can also translate the whole page into French um, and then you'll notice that all the menus also change. So again, for community use, um, for 
learners who maybe have English as a second language, and that's a really, really useful thing to edit your menu with. You can also add in tags to your posts and things like that. Built our, poll, our blog on this introductory session. We've edited some of our menus um, and I might want to, in this, I might want to add in um, primary. So in here, I could have a bit about our primary school. So my old school had a primary and a nursery, but again, this could be your department, subjects, etc. In here, I might want to add a new page for each class. So I've clicked new, but I only wanted an actual page. It'll automatically start. If you just push the add new button, it'll create post. Um, but I'm going to create a new page. It doesn't like save what you've done until you hit save or publish. So you can play around in the menus as much as you want. So I might want to create a page for um, each of my classes to personalise and tell everybody around them what a little bit about that class. So we could say the name of the class. We're not going to put any text in just now because I'm just showing you how to add a page. So we've added page, given it a title. And here, because I want it to go into my, my uh, drop down, I'm going to add it to primary. So I, I want it when somebody clicks primary, they'll see a drop down menu and this page will be one of them. I could save it, but for just now, I'm just going to publish it. It always gives me, if it's gone well, this bar here goes green. If there's an issue, this bar here goes red. So you know if it's worked instantly. It gives you the URL that you're going to share if you want to put it into a QR code. If you've maybe got younger learners, you can make it like see what I've done today badges. Um, I had a class and uh, my class, because pre-writing and reading, they would just go out with a wee sticker to say my work's on our blog and it, the parents could scan, scan the QR um, and I can have a look at what my page looks like. So here's my page here. If I hover over here, it will sit underneath it. The main thing you're going to use your blog for, though, is to pay, put out posts. See what you've been creating, see what you're using. So we have been here. So give it a title. Um, if you want to add media to your, web, um, to your blog post, simply choose Add Media. So you've seen that we can upload and add images. So if I add this, for example, this image here, I can put in my alternate text for screen readers and I can insert it. I can choose where I want it to go. So just using the simple, simply, very similar to Word, I can then add in text onto my page. Um, so we'll imagine that we've been doing coding. I might want to add in more images. So I can add in as many images as I want. I'm going to select a file and I'm going to add in a bbot. Here, when I've added it this time though, I want to make it a thumbnail. So a couple of things that make, might make life easier for you. Three thumbnails fit really nicely across a page. So if you're describing learning that's gone on, three thumbnails fit beautifully on a page. Um, you can adjust them underneath here. You can also, if you're doing like a school show, you can change that to be a full size image. So everybody in the class is seen rather than it be this tiny wee image. So we're going to just pop this in as a thumbnail. When you're happy with it, you can again select it, put it where you want it to go, put some text in front of it. Completely it's not working. So we'll just imagine that says this is our Bbot in some examples. Um, we can also add in tags. So we can put in technologies. We could put in um, coding Bbot. So again, within my blog, and if um, I hope you don't mind if I just show you Marie's blog from last year, just for quickness, um, they've got 
these are these would be tags um, that would work. So the more you use something, the bigger it could be. Um, and that means that life is just that little bit easier if somebody is trying to find something. So you can easily have it and that's available. You'll see things like that on lots of websites. Um, and if you use social media, you'll be familiar. So once you're happy with whatever you want to share, you can publish it or save it. So this time we're just going to save it just just now so you'll see it worked and we've saved the draft and we can review it nothing's public until you post it publicly and publish it so here we can see that hello world here's the draft one and i can go in re-edit it when i'm happy with it i can simply publish and again i can go back to view my post so we can see what i put in we can see here's all the tags that I used. So this using that would draw out as my year goes on, it draws up. So anything highlighted by any of those uh, tags and it can also show me the recent posts. So the more we've gone through, we can choose how many recent posts. So that was adding a new post and it's generally adding new posts that you would use. You may want to just add an image, a video, etc. At any time though, we're going to add another new post so here we can go in and this time we're going to upload a document so i want to share some lyrics to a song so um uh, british council has a website called learn english kids um, and it has if you've not used it honestly like top tip of the day check it out so this is from that website it's a pdf so we could write a little bit of information and we could say um, we might put in a screenshot um, so we could put in some text we have now everybody who may know me on this call knows i'm an absolutely massive fan of glow um, and i'm very lyrical about it as well um, but this is a really nice way if you want to just share something without having to go and get a OneDrive sharing link, etc. Um, you can really easily pop in some text. You can upload your document. It's sitting in your blog. You're not having to share anything from your own OneDrive um, and you can publish it. So we might put in a video of us singing the song. We might put in a link to the actual website. But if I go to this post, you'll see We've been learning this song. Click here to see the lyrics and it takes me just to that document. We're not being distracted by anything else. It's just that singular document. So if you've got a presentation, you could save it as a PowerPoint, share it with parents, um, newsletters, different things like that. Really, really easy way to share things. You'll see I've got my recent ones here. We could add in uh, expressive arts, etc., with tags. And the comments, you can choose to have them turned on or off. And I'm just going to show you that next. But if somebody wanted to leave a comment, when they view your website, they would just be seeing it here. As this is an introductory session, I know that many of you will be just um, coming to this new. Some of you may have used them in the past. But this session hopefully has given you a taster of how just to do some really basic things to get yourself started. Um, one core thing you do need to know about is users and tools and settings. So... In users, this is where you might add your class. So you can choose add new and you have two different options. If you're from a setting, you can choose your local authority, then let you see your school and your class and you can automatically add all of your learners in one go. Um, and you would probably, if we'll go back to my presentation just as we finish, but thinking about those options, you may just want to let add your users as subscribers to start with, your class, or you may want to add them as contributors so that anything they do um, has to be vetted before it's done, just to build that sense of responsibility and then you can choose how you move forward. If it's public, you may just want to um, be using it within your um, collegiate team 
And so you may just want to add a couple of individual teachers um, or practitioners in your setting, in which case you can do this by using add users. And this is handy as well if you've got young people who work with partner organisations who do have whole accounts, so maybe bilingual support, the speech and language team, etc. Every authority is different. The username of the person that I want to add. Whenever you add somebody, you're then asked to add what kind of role you want to bring them in as. So administrator, editor, etc. And please do refer. I'll show you the website that um, Marie spoke about at the end, but also it's on the slides. But normally you would be choosing subscriber, contributor. It would be very few people who would have um, editor or um, administrator rights usually. Um, so once you're happy, we'll just make me a contributor. Um, and add users. Contributor means I could write a post but it wouldn't be published, somebody else would have to do that, one of the editors, administrators, so on. So now I've got two people who are part of my group. If you were to have added your whole class though, you would see a big long list and you would see the role that they have and how many blog posts they've done. So you can then see if there's somebody not contributing allows you to have that conversation. It lets you see what different roles people have um, and you can remove somebody at any time. So you can choose to change the role, you can also choose to remove them using this. So I can remove that person. So again, a young person may move settings, um, a teacher may not be needed in the school to be part of that, they've moved to another uh, local authority and so on. Finally, we're going to look at the settings. So in settings, this is where you get to choose Discussion is whether or not you want to have comments turned on or off. Um, it allows you to set up notifications. Um, you can turn on how many comments things might have and general statements that are available when somebody submits a comment. Reading is the other one. So discussion is automatically set up to allow comments. So if you don't want them on, go to discussion. Reading is where you can choose what it looks like. Do you want a static page with rolling comments below or do you want the whole thing to roll um, like mine was? But importantly, this bit at the bottom, blog visibility. Do you want your blog to be completely private, meaning, and it gives the redefinition there, um, people have to be um, a member by you adding them as users. Do you want it to be available to people in Globe? Um, or do you want it to be public? So that again, thinking back to sharing a QR code at, um, on your classroom door, celebrating your learning within the community, that would be that one. And then writing, again, this allows you to choose whether or not you um, want emojis turned into different icons, whether or not you want it to be a block editor um, and switch editors. So you would probably have that as off as default. No, you don't want different people to just choose who the editors are going to be. You want that solely to be the administrators. You can then um, choose if you've made a site and you think, do you know what? So we're going to go back to our demo one before. Let me just go back in. So go to my dashboard, go into um, tools, go all the way down. You've played around hopefully after this session. You will um, change, uh, you'll have played around, you'll have got a little bit more familiar with and you might be ready to have a demo one of your own with your class or do one with your class. If you don't want your demo one that you were playing in, you can delete it. And that gives you two options. What, well, it doesn't give you two options, it gives you two steps. You click delete, it generates an email. You then have to um, confirmed by email. I can see two questions just before I finish up on go back to our slide. If you remove them from the blog, does that remove? No, it doesn't remove the posts that they've posted out. Um, it changes if it's showing their names, um, Amanda, it just changes them to unknown user usually if they're no longer in that tenancy. If they move to another setting though, then um, it just, it, it still shows names if that's the way it's been set up, but their posts are still there all the way through. Um, I'm not sure if it does. Yes, you just change the role. Always just change the role and remove. Them. Okay, so just to go back in, delete there. So I'm going to flip back to our presentation really quickly. 
as I said, if you select that delete site, you'll get this. You have to confirm. There is no, I cannot emphasize this enough, there is no undoing this. Normally, if you delete something in Glow, you've got a wee grace period. We can get things back. Uh, this is not one of those cases. So be sure about deleting. But don't hang on to things if you don't need them. So um, click the X there um, and then delete your site permanently. What that does, come out of this view, is it will then trigger an email that will say Glow Support. We are confirming you no longer want this site. Click the link. Once you click the link and you see this message, it's gone. So if you get to this stage, you can't get it back. So it's a really straightforward process, but like I say, please do make one, play around with it. You can't fake it. Um, and so see what you what works for you and what questions you might have. Where you can get additional help moving forward. So as I said, this is a red digital pencil case series. So we will run an amber one that's slightly more in depth, looking at maybe adding Twitter feeds onto your blog, etc. Um, so look out for those coming up um, towards Easter time. But when you're in here, go to the Scottish launch pad, select uh, Glow Connect, and Glow Connect tile takes you to here. Underneath that uh, Microsoft 365 one is this bit Glow Blogs, and that's the blog that uh, Marie and I have both been referring you to. The amazing man, John Johnson, he is the oracle of uh, Glow Blogs. If you just click on where it says Glow Blogs, don't let the pop up window open. That will take you to this page here, and it's this help with glow, and then it's this little bit here um, that you want to access. And that has this amazing website that tells you literally how to do everything um, going. Um, we'll also run a session specifically on ePortfolios if that's something that you want to look at, kind of reviewing the year with your class, um, we can run a session on that. Um, for you too, but there's bits there for you. There's also additional support on DigiLearn Scott, the national team I'm part of, and this QR code will take you straight there. And with that, I think we're four minutes over. I'm terribly sorry, everybody. I really hope that that's been of use to you and kind of getting a flavour of what Glow Blogs are. I can't thank Marie and um, Bridalbin Academy enough for their amazing poetry, but also for sharing how they use uh, Glow Blogs.